the ultimate question, surprisingly late in the interview. Are you ready for this? Sure. P-Doom, P-Doom, what's your P-Doom, what's your P-Doom, what's your P-Doom? Dr. Stephen Burns, what's your P-Doom? Uh, I don't know, like, uh, 90% or something. But, you know, I kind of <laughs> pulled that number out of my ass, so take it for what it was. So high. <laughs> I think the, uh, yeah, it, things, things seem pretty grim to me. There's, um, but of course we're, we're working to make it better. So, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's kind of funny because I, I normally get the P doom question out of the way early and I kind of forgot and skipped it. And like, we did this interesting interview and now we're like getting close to the wrap up and we're like, Oh, by the way, my P doom's 90%. Yeah. I, I think there's a, there's, there's a lot of issues that, that go into that. And yeah, we, we can talk about the different contributions. Wow. Okay. So, and then when you, so when you think about like the success of your own program, that kind of implies that you think you have like a pretty low chance of success. Um, I, I don't know. I think, uh, um, it's possible. Like I, I'm doing the best I can. I think there is a, a decent chance that like, I'll come up with some plan that like kind of works in principle, but is like hard and expensive to implement and like very easy to go awry. And then like, even if it's implemented right, it turns out that, you know, like we, we don't even know that like these alleged, you know, if you take a, you know, you, you, these alleged like bioengineered high IQ humans that you were talking about earlier in the interview, like, uh, we don't know that they would actually like be good maybe with great power comes great corruption even if you start with a good person and yeah i'm not sure it's that decision relevant and i don't like how p doom has become sort of this tribal marker that's blown out of proportion mm -hmm. to to its actual decision relevance which which is not zero like obviously uh you're getting lots of important information about you know people's stance towards the problem yeah i i feel you and certainly eliezer has made himself clear that he is not a fan of p doom for my part, the reason I bring up P. Doom so often in this podcast is because I am trying to move the Overton window. So people who watch episode after episode, they're like, oh, wow, all of these incredibly intelligent people are telling us that there's a high chance that we're doomed. Hmm. Like maybe the message will get through. Yeah. And I'll just reiterate that that's not like P. Doom from LLMs next year, but rather like P. Doom from AI, I don't know, in my lifetime or something. Are there any other policies that you wish people would adopt? Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have any strong takes on that. I usually leave that to the policy people. Yeah, yeah, honestly, same here. I mean, I, the point of this show is basically just fear-mongering, just to make people realize, <laughs> uh, hey, guys, uh, we're doomed, right? And then people ask, so what should we do, Leroy? And I'm like, um, I don't know if I've gotten that far, okay? But I just think most people are walking around not even knowing that we're doomed. And I feel like I can do my part by at least opening their eyes to the doom. Uh, yeah, you're, you're doing good work. Thanks. Do you think that fear mongering is good? Um, I, I would like people to have accurate beliefs about the future of AI, and they can feel feel how they feel about those accurate beliefs. Um, but I think that the accurate beliefs would involve that, like we we are on track to make AI that wants to kill its programmers and kill its users and kill everybody else, and that it's a hard technical problem, and that. It's not the kind of thing we can just iterate our way out of when it's already happening for lots of like deep reasons about, you know, safety being hard to test and, you know, irreversible problems. I think that we are inviting this new intelligent species onto the planet and it's, you know, nobody's asking permission. They're just doing it. And it's going to be this species of psychopathic hostile AIs. And this is like really bad. And I, I do think that it would be good if people knew about that insofar as that's true yep okay well then riddle me this you know you're talking in a calm voice you're having a good time getting interviewed but do you feel terrified um i think my my mood is not mostly dependent on that i'm still more upset by you know like my, my kid cutting his uh cutting his knee then or i don't know every now and then i'll i'll shed a tear about the about the coming to doom 
and like how hard these things are to solve and that I'm not making more progress and I'll feel frustrated and I'll feel other things. But mostly on a day-to-day basis, I'm just trying to do the best I can and, and live my life. Yeah, totally. I, I was uh, jogging on the road the other day and there was like no sidewalk and the cars were like passing pretty close. And I'm like, you know, the, the feat that I'm doing in terms of like how intuitively scared I should be right now, I should be like way scareder than handling a snake right now in terms of like how much bravery and recklessness I'm showing by like running close to these cars. But my intuition hasn't really caught up, right? I don't really have an intuition to be like, oh my God, running close to a car? That is like so scary. You know, that's like a, a, a tiger is like bearing its jaws at you. I, I just, you know, my hypothalamus and brainstem just haven't gotten the message yet because I haven't had enough generations to evolve that. Yeah, exactly. So, Right. So similarly, it's like, okay, we're all doomed from AI, but I don't, you know, I just don't have that uh, firmware to, to be scared. Yeah. Yeah. If there's a, if there's a spider crawling up your leg, that's going to be a stronger reaction than me announcing on a podcast that your most likely cause of death is, is AI. Mm-hmm.